Hi, I'm Rami Tamimi. Today I'm going to show you how to obtain high accuracy positioning utilizing just one GNSS receiver. In the last video, I showed you how we were able to utilize two GNSS receivers in order to obtain high accuracy positioning by setting up both receivers as a base and a rover. In order to do the base rover method, you're required to have two GNSS receivers. Having two receivers means you're going to have to double the cost of your equipment as well as maintain both receivers. You're going to have to also carry an extra tripod and tri brack so that you can set up the base station. What if I told you that there's a way to utilize just one GNSS receiver and have RTK and enable positioning utilizing something known as the CORS network. CORS stands for Continuously Operating Reference System. These CORS stations are permanently set up in a single location and continue to observe satellites and perform corrections based on any errors that they observe. Most municipalities, countries, states own these systems and allow public access to anyone that sets up an account. CORS stations are used by geodesists in order to measure the Earth. They're able to measure any changes that happen on Earth's surface and using the same position that they're in can also help geodesists measure earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or any tectonic movement. And us surveyors are able to use the core stations as the control segment for our rover positioning. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Now, depending on where you live, the CORS network might be managed by either your country, your state, some private entity. Everyone's a little bit different. For me, I live in the great state of Michigan, and therefore the Michigan Department of Transportation are the people that manage the Michigan CORS network. Therefore, I need to create an account on their website in order to access the CORS network. Now, in the description, I've added the MDOT website that you can go to in order to create an account to access the CORS network. If you go down a little bit on the site, I just want to show you all of the different stations that are throughout the state of Michigan. Where I live in Detroit, we've got plenty of stations everywhere. Usually you're going to find this with heavily populated areas. So when I move up towards the upper peninsula of Michigan, there's not as many stations and uh, that's because there's just not as many people that live up there. And if you end up in one of these areas where there's no core station, then you're going to have to use a base station of your own, just like I did in the previous video. Okay, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select create account. Now the first thing they're going to make me do is create an MDOT account and uh, usually you can create a website account before you can create a CORS network account. So for me, username, I'm just going to put my name, password, I will just, I will put a password. All right, and now it says the NTRIP username. NTRIP stands for Network Transportation of RTCM via internet pool. And this is the pool of users that are accessing the CORS network. So for me, the username, I'm just going to use the same username I did for my MDOT account. Rami. To meet me. Password, I will put a password. Now it's gonna ask me for some personal information. So my first name, Rami. Last name, Tomimi. Job title, YouTuber. Email address, so I will put my email. There we go. Company. Now I can add a picture. Uh, I'm not going to, but if you really wanted to, you can add a profile picture. Some additional information, uh, the user type. So I'm going to be using this for surveying. So I will say surveying. The sensor brand, I'm using an IMLID. Sensor model, reach RS2. It's going to ask you about dealer information. That's not important. And then your address. So I'll just type in my address. All right, we'll come down here, and they just want us to type in this code to make Make sure we're not robots, I guess. And now I will accept and submit my form. And after you've submitted your form, you'll get an email like this that tells you that the account is created. Now again, everyone's going to be a little bit different, but for Michigan, we get a PDF that gives us instructions on how to set up uh, our receivers to the CORS network. So I'll go ahead and click on that, and it opens up that PDF. You can see here, this is the IP address that I'm going to use. And then depending on what type of equipment I'm using, I'm given a variety of port numbers to use. So with that information, Let's go ahead and input all of it into our receiver and connect to the CORS network. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and power on our REACH receiver. Okay, there we go. It's going to connect to my phone now. All right, I have the REACH view app open. All right, REACH rover has appeared. I'm going to select it. And now we are connected to our receiver. Now, as you can see, we only have a single solution because there is no base station. We are not connected to any base stations and therefore the only kind of solution we're getting is a single solution from the satellites. So what we're going to do is go into settings and go down to connection input and where it says in trip we're going to add our account. Since I'm in Michigan and MDOT is the one that manages the cores network I'm just gonna call this MDOT. MDOT. Alright the IP 
address. Now, if we take a look at that PDF, we should be able to figure out the IP address. Open up the PDF, and if we look here, the IP address is right there, so I'll just copy this over here, 148.149.0.87. Make sure I copied that correctly. Yep, that looks good. Now, for port number, you're going to need to do some investigating, but for me, I know that port number 1001 uh, for all individual sites is the appropriate port for me, so I will type in port number 10001. Username, this is the username that we use to create our account, so Rami Tamimi. Password, you type in your password here, and then it asks for the mount point. The mount point is where the core station is located. Some states require you to actually select the mount point that you want. In that case, you're going to need to study a map and figure out where the closest one to you is. In Michigan, thankfully, I can just select mount point and I can just search up nearest. And this will automatically connect me to the nearest mount point. All right, so I've selected nearest. I'm gonna hit done and save. So now we are waiting for corrections, receiving corrections, and we are floating right now. Hopefully very soon here, we're going to fix. And there we go, we're fixed. We are receiving corrections and we can even take a look at the position of the base station that this receiver is connected to. So rather than setting up our own base station, we're going to be utilizing the public cores network and connect our receiver to that base station. Great, now I can close out of this, go over to survey. I'm gonna start a new job since I'm in a new location. And there we go, our position is found. If I click on the top here, I can change my pole height. I have this set to two meters, so I don't need to change that. So this will give us the correct elevation whenever we capture a point. I can pick up my receiver and I can move around and begin my survey. And so wherever I go now, the position will change on my map and I'm always gonna have a high accuracy position thanks to the cores network. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. Rami, what if I wanna use my GNSS receiver in a different country? Or what if I wanna use it in a different state? How can I change the in-trip information to connect to a different cores network? Well... Well, let's go to a different state and connect our GNSS receiver to their cores network. Columbus, Ohio, here we come. It is 5.15 and boards at 5.45. Half an hour to get a snack. Boarding the plane. Hello. Thank you. That guy's shoe right there. That is the Ohio State campus. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to welcome you to Colombo. It's for the local time is 7.03 p.m. Have a great night. Thanks, Thank you, you too. Well, we're here now at Ohio State's campus in Columbus, Ohio. I've got my GNSS receiver here and I've got my pole and I'm gonna show you how to connect to the cores network here in Ohio. Take off my coat here. Okay, now we're gonna take our GNSS receiver out of its case. Next, I'll just take the receiver and put it on the pole and then we'll just raise the pole. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to set up an account with the Ohio Department of Transportation in order to access the CORS VRS network. Check out the link in the description to get to this website. And uh, if you take a look here, they talk a little bit about their reference frame and the VRS system. VRS stands for Virtual Reference System. So you can learn a little bit more about the Ohio specific CORS network. If you go all the way down to the bottom here, you're gonna see a link that says to obtain access to ODOT's VRS network. You're gonna click on that and it's gonna take you to a form that you need to fill out. So I see here, Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT Cores Network. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in my first name, my last name, title, uh, you. 
YouTuber. Company name, my address, email address, put in my email address. All right, next I have the wireless data service provider. You're gonna wanna put the service provider that you're accessing the internet from. So because I have a phone that is on the Verizon wireless network, I'm just going to type in Verizon wireless. Next for the wireless equipment, uh, I'm using my iPhone, so I'll just say iPhone 13 Pro. Next it says GPS slash GNSS receiver, so I am using Imlid Reach RS2. Now for data collector, if you're using a data collector, make sure you put the model of it. Um, if you're using an app like I am, just put the name of the app, reach, view. Suggested login, this is what your username is going to be. So put the username that you wanna use. For me, I'm just going to use my name. Suggested password, put in the password that you wanna use. All right, then you'll hit done, and then you'll submit the form. You'll be greeted with a thank you after you submit the form, and now you should have access to the VRS system. Let's go ahead and check our email and see if we got the information in order to connect our GNSS receiver. And as you can see here, I've got an email from ODOT and I have my IP address and port number as well as all the different mount points that I can connect to. So we're going to use this information to connect our GNSS receiver to the Ohio Cores network. First thing we'll do is power on the GNSS receiver. Okay, and we're connected to the Reach Rover. So I'll just tap on settings and right here under end trip, I'm going to press on the pencil and we have the MDOT information from Michigan, but I want to add the Ohio information for ODOT. So I'm going to click add and profile name. I'll just call this ODOT address. If I go over here, I can take a look at the IP address 156.63.13. Point one one five, and the port number is 2101. Next, I'm gonna add my username, which was just my name, because that's what I picked, and then I'll add my password. I'll select mount point, and it'll load in all the mount points on this IP address, and we can see the Ohio ODOT VRS RTCM3. That is the mount point that we want. All right, and I've moved to a more open area, so I'm gonna go ahead and select save, and then tap on ODOT. Right here, it says waiting for corrections, so let us wait until it receives the corrections. All right, now it's receiving corrections, and we are Float status, we'll go to status. And there we go, we have a fixed reading and we are observing satellites with corrections coming from the Ohio Cores Network. I'm gonna close out of this menu and go into survey and we'll create a new job. We'll call it Ohio and there we are. We are at the oval in the center of the Ohio State campus. I love it. And that is how you can obtain high accuracy positioning utilizing one GNSS receiver and connecting it to a cores network. I hope you guys learned something today. If you did, be sure to like the video. I really appreciate it. Also consider subscribing if you wanna learn more about GNSS receivers and surveying. Be sure to check out surveyshirts.com if you wanna buy surveying apparel. Also, if you wanna know more about the Imlid receiver, click on the link in the description and check out the Imlid store. And with that, I will see you guys next time.